Hey everyone, welcome back to the Movie Couple channel. We were invited to check out the Jim Henson Preacher Shop just ahead of the premiere for season two of Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock, now streaming on Apple TV+. To get a behind the scenes look at how the show is created from puppet creation to set pieces. This was a very special and unique opportunity. And we hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed visiting the Preacher Shop. start working with the Twins Company when I was 16, um, and it all started literally from seeing Fraggle Rock at seven years old. It was the first thing that I ever felt just like I have to be a part of that. And I used to tell people um, when I was growing up, uh, when they would say, what's your dream job? After I said I wanted to be, you know, a puppeteer, I wanted to work in entertainment, and I'd always say, well, it doesn't exist anymore. And they would say, what do you mean? I would say, well, it was to work on the original Fraggle Rock. So I never in my wildest dreams thought, you know, 30 something years later that I'd be standing here and now be the creative supervisor for Fraggle Rock and to work on the reboot and be a part of bringing it back. So it's it's literally the most exciting job I've ever had in my entire life. It's the, my passion. I love the show. I love the characters. I love everyone who works on it. And like Nicole said, we don't get a chance to like take people behind the scenes very often. Um, so I'm going to take you around the shop and, and I'll, we're going to show you kind of the highlights of how we bring the puppetry on the show to life. Please ask questions. This is your chance to ask anything and everything you ever wanted to know. No question is too insider or too geeky. I'm a big geek. I love, like, the, the folks that build the puppets will tell you I'm always, like, annoyingly, like, over their shoulders trying to figure out how they're doing something. I love it. So um, all, all questions are welcome. And uh, we have a little surprise for you at the end of the tour. Ooh. So it'll, we'll come back in this room and have a little, a little surprise. But um, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Follow us. Oh, my gosh. Make things come to life. And you have a display here of Fraggles that were part of the original series. Of course, you have, you know, the original Fraggle 5, but you also have new characters like Pogi, um, uh, Price, who's the green Fraggle back then. That was that's the character Brett Goldstein did the voice of. You have the great Glitterini, Adam Lambert does uh, his voice this season. You have Sprocket, you have Uncle Traveling Matt. Hoagie, who's a new character on the show with the purple hair at the, at the end there, and um, Storyteller, who is from the original series, but we brought back in kind of a new way. And then Barry Blueberry, back there as a character I get to play, who's the most ridiculous fraggle announcer game show host in the world. These are our photo puppets. Um, so what that means is that inside of them, they're all uh, armatured. There's a wire inside so we can pose them. So when you see, you know, shots of the puppets in their full bodies, uh, it's just a, a nice way to make them look camera ready. But here to tell you even more about these glorious puppets are two of the gentlemen who work on building puppets for the show. They are also our on-set puppet wranglers. What do you say as a puppet wrangler? We're about to tell you. This is Alexander Jurgen Ferguson and Scotty Johnson. Well, so the, yes, he, he already said these are these are the photo puppets, but we also use these. These are also our stunt players. Oh, these are the stunt ones too on yeah. the show. So like if. If when Red comes down a zip line or has to go diving, any anything like that, like we'll use these to rig rig stunts. If and then someone gets thrown across a room, we've got two people and we're literally throwing them like footballs across the <laughs> stage. Yep. So so yeah, sometimes they're they're a bit like throw throw puppets, but we also oh, but they are they're kind of the stunt players. Jurgen's in charge of the all the onset rigging, and so everything like you know all the. All the various specialty poses, particularly when they're full body like this, like Jurgen facilitates all of that. And again, we'll, we'll armature them per per shot and per per activity. So, and the Wranglers really are for for the puppeteers. They are our life source because you know if we need a puppet to hold something or to do something with their hands or to have their pupils uh, stuck a certain way for a shot to work, they are the ones who do that. And they're masters on how to figure out very difficult situations. When we have our production meetings before we shoot uh, the night, you know, the night before we shoot the next day, they really are the secret sauce to figuring out how we can actually get it done. Um, and sometimes it's exciting and it's fun stuff. Other times it's you guys literally climbing skin, up on skin of the teeth, <laughs> flying by the seat of our pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, we're like, literally, like, wait a minute, we need 
four puppets instead of two, and we need them all on pogo sticks. You've got 20 <laughs> minutes. Get yeah. done. Yep. And so we're like, okay. And so yeah, well, gotta it's, make, a, gotta it's make amazing that all, and... all the sets are so big now too. But but that also just means lots more rock climbing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of times they'll want like they have like this. this if you've seen the show, there's like the little cliffs where the waterfalls pour mm -hmm. down. Sometimes they'll say. Can we get two fraggles up there? But we want them moving, so we have, we have uh, like robo hands that fit up inside their bodies and make their heads move. And then we have to climb up the rocks, pin them down, and then you'll have a puppeteer controlling the robo hands. So the puppet's still looking around, but there's no puppeteer. But that's real water on the set. By the way, people ask that all the time. Like, oh, that's not CG water. It's nope. real water. And so when you see a fraggle in the pond, there's literally a puppeteer <laughs> under. The pond with their hand through a rubber glove that's going into crushing feet of water <laughs> and they're puppeteering so it's and these guys have to and yeah the right bears we have to put on big rubber boots and we're walking through the pond and kind of holding the puppet down till they can get their hand up inside with the glove it's pretty crazy for each of the main fraggle five that, that get in the water a lot we have a whole special puppet that's just for them, just for the water. And so they have a special wig that behaves a little bit different. And and it does, you know, the, the, the really one of the tricks is that the, the water is chlorinated because <laughs> so that it so that it's safe to climb around in. And that can kind of bleach out the puppet a little bit. But we have a special puppet just for that that then is a little more durable and then can also kind of be refurbed quickly. And, and we have we have kind of freshened them up between every dive, so it it almost ruins a puppet, but, but, <laughs> but we have but we have we have one just for that. Is it good to see fraggles in the dryer, which is always red has oh, wigs, right. like specific wigs. So we have the wet rig that's completely doused, but then we have the semi wet rig, mm -hmm. wig and her ponytails pop on and off, so we're constantly changing them out. It's genuinely crazy after after one of those scenes because again the Jurgen and the other Wranglers who are knee deep in the water are like, you know, like kind of handing it down a line like a bucket brigade, trying to get it, and then we have to run it back to the shop, and and we have a special spinner to spin the water. Out. <laughs> we were talking yesterday about the fact that like we're so wise now in how everything is done, and that you can kind of know right when something is there or it's not really there, and and there's this tactile thing about seeing a puppet in the water, and you just you just go with it, you believe it, it looks natural, it looks right. So it's always worth it, but yeah, definitely that it's the post pond <laughs> moments. Like, all right, get them out, hurry up! We tried to rescue it. Talk a little bit about you know uh, rebuilding from a show that already existed, you know, forty years ago. Yeah, and getting a chance to rethink some things and also just what what we could reuse, what would be rebuilt. Yeah, a I lot guess of sprocket's uh, the best example. Yeah, like 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 sprocket. This is this is an original sprocket from from the original oh, show. My gosh. They've been freshened up a bit, you know. His, his whiskers get get freshened up, uh, but on the on this kind of a puppet, what goes what goes bad is really the foam inside has a half life, oh, and it degrades. But mm -hmm. sometimes the actual, you know, like finding this well loved fur, you know, it, it would be almost impossible to replicate. So, yeah. so so as the as the foam inside goes away, yeah, that's, they can that's replace the that. But we, but we certainly, as a, as a company, you know, we've been doing a long time, so we have all the patterns, and so reproducing these, and then and then the same with the Fraggle Five. These are all the original ones, but they're built exactly the same as the original ones. So it's just like the the, the methods, the materials, the techniques on the Fraggle Five. But then that allows us to kind of play a little bit when we get into some of our newer newer puppets. So like like you can't see on the glitterini, but He's filled with lights inside, and that all hooked up to kind of the light board so that they could control that on set. It's but, really cool, too, because some of the Fraggle Five, um, there's builders in the New York shop who worked in the original series, and they got to rebuild puppets that they built 40 years ago, and it was so emotional yeah. for them because, you know, these are these are like characters they really care about, so to, to get a chance to rebuild Red or Wembley was really yeah. exciting for them, and it was nice to see that for us. Yeah. It's a massive show. Yeah, I mean, there, there's three full sound stages up there, and and, and again, 25 puppeteers at almost all times. You know, there's yeah. plus that's there's, there's, there's never a quiet day. <laughs> yes. Like it's never like, oh, this day is just one puppet. Yeah. It's just like 
No, I think like an uncle traveling mat sheet thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's one puppet is maybe the only time that happens. Yeah. <laughs> On set, there's usually like four full time people kind of per set. But then we also have kind of a separate crew that's pretty much dedicated to the doozers. Hmm. And then we have a full crew that's in the workshop prepping the next day's work. And so we have, we have about 17 people, 17 people working with the workshop that are just, just the technical support. The Great Hall, if I remember <laughs> right, it's about 22 feet high in total. Um, so, and it is much bigger than the original. The original Great Hall and the original series could definitely fit inside of this room and wow. it's probably smaller. Cool. Ours is probably twice the size of this room. It's, it's a yeah. massive, massive yeah. space. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, it's, you know, it's taller than this ceiling. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it goes, the it goes. Level is almost just below here. So yeah, yeah. first level starts here. Yeah, so on, on, this is what it's saying is on Fraggle Rock and, and most uh, Henson produced puppet shows, the sets are raised up about four to five feet mm -hmm. so the puppeteers can be standing beneath it. So, so you're kind of already starting above, you know, human height, but then you're going up another, yeah, 15, 20 feet. And then the water, um, the, the pond in the Great Hall is about eight feet deep. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> and it, it's fun. It, it's cool because you get that sense that it goes uh, down deep, but it's also practical because this year, uh, the season, we really wanted to do more in the water. So like we actually got in like wetsuits as puppeteers and got in there so that we could really puppeteer them and they could frame us out and we could make it look like they really were swimming. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a practical thing and also just an aesthetic thing too. Pretty much scene wise, everything is live. So if you, like when I'm doing Gobo, it's, I'm doing his, his lines live. The only time we use pre-recorded um, voices is if we're doing a song. Mm -hmm. We'll go into the music studio and record the song and the playback just for, for voice health and things like that. And um, if it's a scene where like there's two characters, like myself, uh, what if I play Gobo and Barry Blueberry, if they're both in the scene, then one puppeteer, whichever character has the least amount of dialogue, I'll usually give that, my puppet to that, that performer and they'll do it and I'll go in and loop it later. Welcome to our display of Dooza Magic. Carpin's fine, she's leaning over here. I'll have to go with And anyway, as you can tell, there's a little bit of magic here because we may be small, but we're mighty. And we're going to tell you all about it. So as you can tell, uh, he's being moved by remote control. This is called a Waldo. And this was actually, this technology was invented for the original series back in 1983 by a brilliant electrician named Faz Vazakis, who designed this entire system because they wanted to find a way for a puppeteer to be able to perform a really small character like the Doozers without shaking, without slipping, without if your thumb makes the wrong movement, oh no, it, you know, it looks bad on, on camera. So he came up with this genius idea of using a remote control. So inside of him, and Bobby will tell you much more about this because he's brilliant, there's a bunch of different servo motors inside of him that are working together, reading the signals off of this controller, this Waldo, kind of reading what these commoners are doing and translating it in real time through the air to the RC. So what this does is first of all, let us as puppeteers use a skill that we're really used to, right? I mean, this is how we perform most of the main characters is with our hands inside of the puppet with this part of our bodies. So it feels very familiar and gives us the best performance, but also it makes these guys completely mobile. So we can put them inside of a vehicle, we can put them up on a cliff 50 feet away and still be able to perform them wherever we are. So it really makes their little world come to life. And you can see they have a lot of great motion for six inch tall little creatures. And um, we do have a few stick puppet versions of them when we need specific actions, but 90% of the time on screen, you're seeing them, they are being driven by this RC system. And this is Bobby Bennett, who won the Creature Shop Challenge. <laughs> He's an amazing uh, designer and builder and fabricator. And Bobby was really in charge of the world of Doozers for uh, the reboot of Fraggle Rock. Do you want to talk a little bit about what they're made of, how they're created? Sure. So it, it is a reboot, so we wanted to make sure that we stayed as true to the original designs. These are kind of the original 
designs, um, but we wanted to update them. You can see over here, I designed them uh, in a computer digitally. And here's some, some of the designs at the top. And then you can see where I kind of rendered the, uh, the gloves and the hats um, and the, the pouches and, and things like that. And then we 3D print them. It's just easier to 3D print them than to actually sculpt them, especially because they're so tiny. How did they do um, back in the day? Because obviously 3D printing They exists. sculpted them by hand back in the day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Once you have them uh, sculpted, you make a mold of them, and we cast them out of foam latex. And it's basically a makeup sponge material. Same thing. Um, and there's an outer mold and an inner mold so that we can uh, control the thickness because like Johnny was saying on the inside are tons of mechs. Me what? Mechanism. What do you say? I'm sorry. This, this is this all a lie? Um, it's all a lie. And so you want it, you want just a shell of a skin so that you can fit all that in there. Oh yes. So you guys can feel like what it, it's covered in baby powder, just FYI. Um, oh my! This is like squishy, one of the babies, squishy. so you can. I'm not gonna lie, this is very awkward for me. There it is. Oh my god! Stop! So then we do a Watch process it. called flocking. Um, flocking is this material right here, and what you do is you put a glue on the the foam, and you use static electricity to suck the fibers onto the skin and you know like when you're scared or your hair stands up on your arm it does the same effect so it, it'll stick out straight what so you get like a nice, <laughs> a nice kind of you as disturbed by this as i am so this is what the flop looks like and it's just shredded synthetic material and once it goes into the static electricity it gets shot onto this and then you know oh. A nice little furry user. Nice. And uh, the original <laughs> users, this was their, their little harness, and it was all cast out of foam latex too and sculpted. Uh, for the the new season, we kind of updated it so you can kind of see how <laughs> it's just you can do more with the with digital printing now. You can so that entire thing is me, right? Except for the the, the strings for the most part. Everything Correct. Digitally yeah. printed, yeah. Um, and especially when you're doing such a high scale, like it's, it's a massive amount of just stuff that you have to make for these. And it, using the computer and 3D printing, you can speed up your pipeline, I guess. And then we also wanted to update, um, give them a little more color in their, in, their, in their outfits. So the architect still has his vest, but cotter pin and turbo and wrench and a lot of the background users, we wanted to kind of give them this multicolored vest just to brighten them up a little bit so they pop a little bit more in 4K. This season, for the new for the reboot, we did them all, uh, we 3D printed them and put magnets so that we could sculpt different positions. So as they're filming, they can just pop on. Do it. Do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now Show them. Thumbs up. Look at that. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, wait. Thumbs up. I can't see. <laughs> and I have a lunch bag. I can put the lunch bag on. That'd be fun. Yeah, where's Is that over there? there? Yeah. Look at that. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Ah. There we go. Look at that, I'm ready for lunch. What am I having? Yeah, what do you have? I'm having probably some um some radish pellets. They're big. And uh maybe a little bit of moss melon. And uh probably a steaming cup of radish juice. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay, which one's which? Okay, this one's left. Yeah, locations behind. Uh, I'm speaking. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Pretend this is an audition. <laughs> oh god, I need I need a setting place. Yeah. <laughs> Improv. Um you're you're inside a dark cave and there's a <laughs> dragon. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this is Dan Garza. <laughs>
who is the voice and Hi. facial performance of Junior Korg. Yeah. Hello, Dan. And <laughs> Junior, uh, Junior, Dan shares that role with Ben Duroche, who is the body performer inside of Junior, who is not inside of Junior, no. making Ben stand here for, still for an hour. Just <laughs> uh, ben is based in New York, and he couldn't be here today. But, um, so it's every Gorg takes two performers to work together. Uh -huh. um, as you can see, using a very similar technology to the Doozers, Dan is operating all the facial expressions with these two controls here. And that's sending an RC signal inside the I know, this is upsetting. Oh, we can. Architect is very upset too. Oh, yeah. um, and inside of the suit, um, one of our amazing puppeteers is in there doing the body performance. They're wearing a helmet, essentially, that contains the head on top of it. And they do not see through the mouth, which everyone asks. They don't see through the mouth, and they don't even see technically through the eyes. They're wearing basically a pair of goggles inside of there that has a monitor, a small camera monitor, inside the, the goggles. And there's a camera inside of the head pointing out very, very small. I forget where it is on Junior, actually. Is it, don't, don't is it in? No. Ow, I'm sorry, Junior. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Uh, some characters have it in the top of their head, some are in the middle. But anyway, there's a very, very teeny little camera hidden here that sees out and they're seeing that feed in their eyes. Or they also have the option of seeing what the camera sees. So sometimes if it's a really difficult scene where they have to interact with the fraggles and they need to know where they are, they'll actually want to see the camera scene, uh, feed so they can kind of figure it out. I don't know how they do that, frankly, because the, you know you have no sense of where you are in space except for the camera scene. Um, but most of the time they look directly out through that camera. So it's very disorienting and it's a lot of work and it's hot yeah. and, and there's a, Everyone wears comms so that the performers can communicate back and forth during a scene or between takes if there's notes. Um, and this is built so beautifully because it's basically different kinds of yarns and different fabrics that are super lightweight on a netting. So it really breathes for the performer, but it gives that great kind of bulky feel. This is a legacy character uh, that I held very, very close to my heart. And uh, I love Richard Hunt. Uh, and, and everything that, that he brought to, to Junior. And so it was a fine line between honoring Richard's work and also uh, making him my own uh, and making him true and honest. Um, so there's a fine line there. And uh, um, a very trusted friend said, look, man, you're never gonna be, you're never gonna be Richard. You just have to make it your own and you have to do what you do. And you really, I mean, the, the facial uh, voice performance for the Gordons really are kind of the eyes and the ears to some degree for the performers inside the suit because the set that the Gorg's Garden is built on is massive and it's built like a real yard. If you look at it, there's, there's hills, there's a bridge, there's rocks, so it's very dangerous. And Ooh. so oftentimes as they're rehearsing, even in the middle of take, because they can communicate, they can say, look out, go to the right, look out. You know, they're, they're really looking out for each other. And I think it's the ultimate form of collaboration between performers because they're not just bringing a character life, they're also physically looking out for each other too. This is something that you'll be able to see now that I've told you, but um, there are points when Benny has to look through the mouth. He has some access, but that's for safety things. So when his back is to the camera, I'll leave the mouth open. When he's running, I'll allow the mouth to flap, and as he, and as he does run, then uh, it'll be sort of like a <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that it justifies this. Or if he's gonna grab something, he needs to be able to see because in the monitor, uh, everything is flipped. So instead of, instead of uh, you know, you and I looking in a mirror and we turn our heads, we do this, right? In a, minute, in a monitor, we do this. So it's the opposite of what we're used to. So it's hard to thread that needle sometimes. So when Benny's about to grab something, uh, a, a radish, a tool, or, or whatever, a lot of times, Junior, you'll see him go, ah! Well, that's so he can see what's, what he's gonna grab because he can't see it through the monitor. So he sees it in all the secrets. The internal structure is basically uh, layers of hooping. Yeah. So there's hooping covered in net, and then and then all of the yarn is hand tied, hand tied piece by piece to create his fur. So it's like it, it's a, it's basically the air still kind of gets through there. So it's you know certainly not not cool, but it's uh, <laughs> but but the air still there is still a bit of airflow inside. So. Guy, did you say you do all that stuff by hand? Yeah. Strand by strand? Yeah, strand by strand. Mm -hmm. wow. it, starts at, it starts as just a, a skein of yarn, and then, uh, and then bit by bit, each of those is tied into, into the base netting. Yeah. Wow. 
if a real sized gourd were to come in this room, he'd be 18 feet tall. Oh. So the yeah, so the fra so how it goes, you know, doozers are the smallest, they're six inches. They're knee high to a fraggle. Fraggles are about 18 inches. And they're so they're real size to humans, like their size here is how that they would appear in real life. But the gorgs are supposed to be much bigger than they actually are. So whenever you see the fraggles in the gorgs garden, they're either shot on blue screen and shrunk down. Or we also have these little mini fraggles that are uh, basically like rod puppet fraggles. We don't use them as much as uh, the original series did because they don't look quite as great on camera anymore. But with the advent of CG, uh, like in the first season, on the, the first episode, there's that wonderful shot of the fraggles running around the garden. That, those are um, CG fraggles. And so we're able to kind of use a combo of the, those mini puppet fraggles, blue screen, and CG fraggles to kind of get everything we need them to do. If you look here at the television screen in front of you there, uh, I'm looking right at you hopefully there. Looking through the camera, and uh, this right here is pretty much the most basic form of television puppetry you can do. As you can see, I'm holding Gobo up over my head, and uh, looking here into the camera, and I'm watching the monitor. And that's really what kind of lets me see what you see, so I can make sure things look really good. And I can make sure I'm in the center of the shot. I can make sure I'm looking the right way, looking right through down the barrel, coming in close, even closer, and uh, you know, make sure my head's out of shot. Make sure he looks pretty good. Runs in and out of frame. Play with the depth. Ooh, Tell you my thing. And uh, yeah, this is the most basic form of, of, of puppetry that we do. Um, but as you can see, it's all about what we see in the monitor. We never look at each other on set. We're never really making eye contact as performers. We're not really like you would with another actor, right? We're not looking in each other's eyes. We're always watching that monitor so we can compose the shot and make sure the puppets look as good as possible on frame. And it's helpful for a lot of reasons, not just because the puppets look good, but also we can help the director out. So if the director has a vision of having that puppet run a certain way and hit a certain piece of the, of the cave wall and bounce off, we can see that happen in the camera in real time. You know, as an actor, right, as a human doing it, you couldn't watch yourself. You'd have to have someone tell you. So it just, it, we kind of become our own puppetry directors on camera too. And there's something called the magic triangle uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about that, but Don Celine, who was one of the uh, original puppet designers for the Jimetsu Company, kind of coined that phrase. And basically, it's the perfect alignment between the two pupils and the nose as this kind of magical triangle. And when they're just right set, for some reason, it looks like he's looking right at you and that focus is completely right. And you don't really notice it till it's not. <laughs> when it's off, you're like, what's wrong with him? But when you get it right, it really looks like that character's kind of staring right into your eyes and into your soul. And obviously, the lip sync, so it doesn't look like I'm in a badly dubbed movie. <laughs> There's a big difference between this and this. <laughs> and it's really using that camera as the one point of view and taking advantage of how just the smallest motion, like a little look down can look kind of thoughtful, or a look up can be like discovering something new, or just a little curl of the lip and a look down can look super sad. You know, he doesn't have any tricks inside of him. He doesn't have any eye blinks or, or anything special inside of his eyeballs. It's really just the way I'm moving my hand. And so it really gives him this amazing, flexible mouth. So I can get a lot of great gobo expressions just by curling my hand, you know, when he gets annoyed or a little perturbed or super excited. There's just a lot of, a lot of abilities here. Or the word ooh. Hmm? Oh yeah, the little mental ooh. It's my favorite little thing. It gets a little easy, like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really that's the that's the most beautiful part of these puppets is discovering like what they can do and their strengths and their weaknesses and then kind of playing with those yeah what he said so i can't even reach them yeah, so we, we, adjust, uh, we, we do adjust the shot for, for different heights yeah, that's right. Go like this. Yeah. Back up a little bit. There you go. Right there. Great. Whoa, Dabba. That's kind of close. Yeah. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Over here, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. How are you doing? Uh, it's, well, I'm good. How are you? Good. Just waiting for the bus. Which one are you taking? Hmm? Which one are you taking? The M64. You? I think it's the same one. Oh, you have to come close to me. Don't you have to sit there? There we go. Hi. A friend. A friend. It's a loose monkey. Oh, God. Oh, God. I read about that on TMZ. They're on attack. 
think so. Oh, God, it's here! <laughs> Save yourself, Debbie! <laughs> He's giant. Hi. 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 Yeah, you can force perspective and make a character look so much larger than they are, depending on where you are. Uh -huh. If you're not on the same plane as the other as the other performers, all of a sudden, little Wembley looks like a giant in screen if he's too close. Did you guys so. hear the voice of God? It's <laughs> <laughs> oh. like, I've been watching you, Johnny. Between the monkeys and God, I'm <laughs> rapture earlier. A lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. Soon it shall rain fiery skittles from the sky. <laughs> Take that as a yes. Skittles. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh. I, I think you scared up our other friend. <laughs> uh, that's not a banana. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much to Apple TV Plus and the lead company for the invite for this very special opportunity. And you guys, don't forget to stream Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock on Apple TV Plus.